Hello guys. In this class now, let's not talk about our resolution of the word of your vectors. Of course, this will practically be our lesson three. Now remember that in lesson one, we'll talk about the introduction to scalars and vector where we define scalars, we define vectors. In lesson two, we went further to talk about your relative velocity. Remember, we are following the outline accordingly, following the course outline by Jan, as well as what Y and other exams because the outline is the same. So we are following the outline exactly. So resolution of what of vectors? Lesson three. Let's move now quickly on the resolution of vectors. We're going to talk about that to resolve vectors. The vectors to be resolved depend on which case is the vector falling upon. Is the vector falling on parallel vectors or perpendicular, or they are talking about your your parallelogram law, or they are talking about what horizontal and vertical word, um, vectors. Now, so take note that in resolving vectors, we said it depends on the case. Resolution of vectors is dependent on the word on the case. Which case of vector do you have? Number one, we say, what are the case of vector? Number one, we can have what call your word your parallel vectors. We want to talk about parallel vectors. These are vectors uh, in which there is no angle between the word, the two inclined vectors. Let's say vector A and vector B. This is ve vector A and this is vector B. You can see that they are parallel. Why are they parallel? Because there is no, um, there is no angle between the word the vectors. Another is when the two vectors are perpendicular to each other. Perpendicular means that this guy you are seeing here is what is 90 degrees. So when the vectors are perpendicular to each other, we say that the vectors are said to be what perpendicular vectors. Number three, what of if we have um, vectors who are inclined now? This is when the angle is zero degree. In this first case, angle is zero degree. In this second case, the angle is what 90 degree. You can see that. But in this case, the angle is between, is either the angle is acute or the angle is what obtuse. When we talk about acute angle, what do we mean? We talk about angle that are between 0 towards 290. While when we talk about obtuse, have angle that are between 90 towards 218. Are you seeing that? So, in, when the angles are between 180 to 180, we use your word, your parallelogram word, vectors. We can also use triangular vectors. I'm going to teach everything. And the third, which is the fourth, we're going to talk about is your word, whether the angles are inclined talking about your horizontal vectors and your words, your vertical vectors. This is everything we are going to learn. But in this class, we'll just focus on your word parallel vectors. And we're going to trash all the past questions as we move. Who is excited? Let's talk about your parallel vectors. Now, what are your parallel vectors? Now, to talk about your parallel vectors, I'll start by telling you that this is when there is no angles between the vectors. When there's no angle between the vectors, we say the vectors are parallel. Either you say there's no angle or you say the angle is what your zero degree. When there's no angle between the vectors, the vectors are said to be what parallel. Please, it's a constant past question where I'll be showing you as we move. Now, you can see that if we said if this is a vector A and this is a vector B, you can see that these vectors are said to be parallel. Reason, because we said that there's no angle between them. And we said, note that the resultant of two vectors acting on an object is maximum when the vectors are parallel or zero. So they're going to ask you, it's a constant question that was asked in JAM, constant question I asked in your SSC. So take note that when is the resultant of two vectors maximum, tell them that the resultant of two vectors is said to be maximum when these vectors are parallel or you say the angles inclined is what is zero degree. Maybe you are doubting what I'm saying. Let me start with the past question, JAM 2001 question says, what does the question say? The question says that the resultant of two vectors acting on an object is said to be maximum. If the angle between them is dash, option A, say that the angle is 45 degree, option B, say that the angle is 80 degree, your option C, say that the angle is 90 degree, and practically option D, say that the angle is what, 180 degree. Of course, we say that the, a vector who is parallel has what maximum, the resultant of the vector is said to be what maximum. We're going to discuss what is the resultant. Are you with me? So, what are the bits? The complete series of classes, right, as far as your Syllabus is concerned regarding your jam awaek. Everything has been covered in details for you in the LearnLift app. And guess what? The sweet part is that you have access to your CBT, right? You have access to your video lessons. You have access to your notes. You have access to your past questions. Everything from the beginning to the end is directly in the LearnLift app for you. So all you have to do is just mark down to Play Store or App Store and download the LearnLift app where you follow all your classes from the beginning to the end. A quick one before we move, let's get back to class. Enjoy. Now, let's now talk about still that parallel vectors. If the parallel vectors are in the same direction or they're in different direction, if they're in the same direction, we say that the resultant is equal to what A plus B. Now, what is the resultant of a vector? We are giving two vectors. 
and we need to get one answer. Are you seeing that? The single vector in terms of magnitude and direction, which produce the same effect as the inclined vector, so to call your what your re re resultant word vector. What I call it, it is a single vector that produces the same effect in terms of what direction and magnitude of the two vectors that are what inclined together. I think the two vectors may be three vectors. That um, single vector that is equal to those two vectors, what we call your word, your resultant. Do you understand? So if they are the same direction, we practically say our resultant is equal to what A plus what B. Do you understand that? Now we're giving two vectors. The vectors here are in the same direction. You can see that in the same direction, both of them are going to east. Both of them are going to what? To east. Now what becomes the resultant? How do we solve this? We said that resultant is equal to A plus B. So the resultant here practically becomes what? What is A here? We can take A to be 120. That's 120 Newton plus your what? Your 18 Newton. So the resultant of this is equal to what? 200 Newton. That's the resultant. Are you seeing that? But what is it? This is what the direction we can say 200 Newton. And the direction is equal to, let's come here. Which of them is bigger? Now, why 80 is bigger? 120 is bigger. Are you seeing that? I wish they are moving opposite direction. I say, okay, but both of them are, are, are towards the east. So 120 east. Direction of what? East. Now, but if they are moving opposite direction. We check the guy that is bigger. The guy that is bigger owns it. So we are still following what? 120. So 200 watts east. 200 is become the world result. And this is when they are in same watts direction. Do you understand? Now, what of if these results are in opposite direction? If they are in opposite direction, we say it is A minus B. Now, practically, let's see. Normally, you can see that we have two vectors. This is moving towards the west. And this is towards the east. We remember that what, what we say the, the, the vectors are. We say vectors are physical quantities that have both magnitude and direction. So you, 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 at every time you are resolving vectors, you must first get the magnitude and you talk about the word direction. Here now let's get the magnitude, which is the resultant. Now become R is equal to A minus B. That become 120 Newton minus your word 80 word Newton. That's going to give me what 40 word Newton. Why do we minus? Because they are moving opposite word direction. Now 40 Newton, that's the magnitude now, which is the size. What of now the direction? Now, between 120, between 80 and 120 is bigger. 120 is bigger. So even if you remove, you, you try, start to trace from here towards this side, you still have here towards side, you still have 40. So it is me that my answer is 40 Newton comma what east. I explain why it is east because 120 is bigger than what 180. Please, do you understand? Everybody, when a resultant is parallel. What's the angle? Zero. And what do we say do we do? They are moving in the same direction, we add. They are moving in opposite direction, we what? We add. Are you with me? Now, if you say you understand that, now what is a resultant? Now, let's see this case before we talk about resultant. Practically, we're giving these two are moving in the same direction. And both of them are 80. First of all, because they're moving in the same direction, what becomes the formula? R is equal to what? 80. R is equal to A minus B. So the resultant now becomes your what? 18 Newton minus 80 Newton. That becomes 0 volt Newton. Are you seeing that? And what's the direction we can say is non directional? So once it is 0 Newton, and we said what? Non directional. So now, what are we trying to say? Anytime they give you two vectors, that are equal in magnitude and in opposite direction. What becomes your answer? The magnitude, the resultant becomes what zero in terms of magnitude and the direction is non-directional because both of them are of same magnitude and they are of equal opposite word direction. Do you understand now? We have been talking about resultant, R resultant, R resultant. Now, what is resultant? Now, I'll try to tell you that we say the resultant R is a single vector which have the same effect in terms of magnitude and direction as the original vectors acting together. That single vector that have the same effect in terms of magnitude and in terms of direction as the original vectors is said to be called your word resultant. Like for example, let's say we talk about this is, this is vector 4 Newton, another vector is going 8 Newton, another vector is going 6 Newton, another vector is going 7 Newton. If we resolve them, we're going to get one answer. 
That answer is what we call the word the resultant. Let's say the answer is 10, for example, 10 newton. This 10 newton is what we call the resultant because it is a single vector which has the same effect in terms of magnitude, in terms of direction, as the original vectors acting words together. Will you ever forget that? Close and tell me. What's the resultant vector? It is a single vector which has the same effect in magnitude and direction as the original vectors acting together. Once again, it's a single vector which have the same effect in terms of magnitude and direction as the original vectors acting together. Once again, it's a single vector which have the same effect in magnitude and direction as the original forces acting together. You must be the best. Remember that in this year's jam, no dolly. We are, it, is, it is called a 350 gang upward. You must be among those gangs. So everything should be in your brain. You should be, you should be boiling. Do so you understand now? Now, now that this in this class, we are just focused on parallel uh, resolution, which we have talked about. Let's now give rise to past question, past question, past question. So practically, we are done with this. Let's now talk about the word, the past question. What are the past question on that parallel uh, par par vectors? 2004 question 10. The question says that if the angle between two vectors P and Q is 0 degree, those vectors are set to be dashed. Let's see. Option A said they are set to be perpendicular, B said they are set to be parallel, C said they are set to intersect at 60, and D said they are set to intersect at 45. Of course, if the vectors, if the angle is 0 degree, what should come to your mind? Those vectors are what? Parallel. Making option B to become the word the answer. Quickly, let's turn that past question. Jam 2006, question 14. The question says that the component of vector X along the relation of vector Y is 0. When A, X and Y angle is 45 to Y, B said that when X and Y are in opposite direction to each other, C said that when X and Y are parallel to each other, D said when they are perpendicular. Of course, if the result, if the, the direction is zero, it means that they are parallel to what to each other. Are you seeing that component of a vector along X and Y direction is said to be zero when making option C to be what the answer? Do you understand that? Practically, if you see you understand that, this brings us to the end of this class because in this class we just face parallel vectors. Next class, we're going to face perpendicular vectors when two vectors are acting perpendicular to each other. Don't forget, you have notes, you have CVT. So go to the notes, read the notes, and go to the CVT. Play everything that has to do with perpendicular, uh, parallel before we go to perpendicular. I'll see you in the next class, which will practically be our word lesson for on that vectors. And that will be forces acting perpendicular to each other. I'll be eating past questions. See you in that class for now you've enjoyed this class guess what to follow up for more classes just download the learn lift app whether on play store or app store and then follow up your classes you must do extremely well i'll see you in class bye bye